In southern Saskatchewan, this is one of eight lakes that University of Regina researchers test and sample every two weeks. So you can see the oxygen is going to drop as you go down. Testing that's been done for 28 years. Watching what happens to lakes over time. And the lakes are changing. Data from here and similar research in Ontario helped scientists analyze nearly 400 lakes in the Northern Hemisphere. Their findings, published in Nature Journal, show oxygen levels have fallen over four decades by about 5% at the surface and 19% in deep waters. So in the surface, you're losing oxygen because it's getting warmer. And in the bottom, you're losing oxygen both because it's getting warmer, but also because the lakes are getting greener through time. Greener because of an oversupply of nutrients such as nitrogen and phosphorus, often fueled by human sewage and farm fertilizer seeping into the lake. At its worst, it breeds toxic blooms of algae. In the Muskoka, Ontario region, volunteers are monitoring the algae. With climate change and the more hot, dry weather, lakes that never had a blue-green algae bloom in the past, they could experience them now. All right, there we go. Jason Mattity is a professional angler who captured this video of the potentially toxic blooms. It's just like, I, I can't even fish here because it's thick. And I certainly wouldn't eat the fish out of there, and a lot of the older people say that they wouldn't do that as well. On Papikasis First Nation, Michelle Brass teaches traditional ways of hunting and gathering food. Decreasing oxygen in the lakes means there's less oxygen for fish to breathe. It really does damage the local food system that Indigenous peoples rely upon. Experts say it's possible to remedy the problem, but only if we control land use around lakes and slow climate change. Bonnie Allen, CBC News, Pasqua Lake, Saskatchewan.